Hi, I'm Christian Posta, Global Field CTO at Solo.io. In one of my previous videos, we looked at an open source project called kagent.dev, and that project is used to build AI agents on Kubernetes. And one of the things that we looked at in that video was how agents can be used, or, or rather built, using a system prompt and a set of tools and they can go off and they can accomplish goals and, and tasks, but that agents also need to communicate with each other. So if we take a look at um, an agent, that agent has a system prompt that we talked about, but it also has a list of tools. And what those tools are, are basically calls out to a, uh, an API, a database, some, some file system, but basically to get information from its environment. So an, an agent can actually call multiple tools. And we, uh, like I said, we talked about how agents can also call other agents. And those agents would also have their own, their own tools. Now, the protocols that have been emerging in the ecosystem for making it easier to tie these tools and agents back to the AI models or LLMs that, uh, that get used uh, are the model context protocol, so MCP, and the agent to agent protocol, or A to A. Um, so A to A for how agents communicate with each other and MCP for how tools uh, and, and agents work with, the, uh, work with the LLM. Now in MCP, that protocol is a JSON RPC protocol between the client and the server. And the idea with MCP is to make it easier to provide richer context to the, uh, to the LLM and to even save off context, things like prompts, uh, things like uh, previous snippets of knowledge into the, uh, into the MCP server that can be then uh, resurfaced and used by the LLM. And so what that means is this MCP protocol is stateful. Now, the way we expose tools to agents, we have to be careful about how many tools we expose. Because if you give an agent access to hundreds of tools, let's say, the, uh, the LLM can easily get confused about which tools to pick and, and, and when. Um, and so from an enterprise standpoint, when we start to look at building these agentic systems and deciding and curating which tools we want to expose to which agents, we need governance uh, around how, how we do that. We also need to secure the communication between the agents and the tools, and uh, we need to enforce things authentic, like auth uh, authentication, authorization, and uh, telemetry collection and, and tracing. At the moment, both of these protocols, or rather neither of these protocols, really solve that. And we don't really want them to solve that in the protocol, but we need to solve the problem somehow. So it's left up to developers to try to implement this in their code, or try to hack around some uh, existing way that they, they might be doing it. But the right way would be to use a, uh, a control point in the network that implements these protocols and it can apply the, uh, the security and observability and governance to these protocols um, outside of, of the application. And so that's why at, uh, at Solo, and, uh, and, and at Solo we, we focus on how to build, to secure, and to run these agentic systems, uh, we've built a proxy called Agent Gateway. And actually, I'll, I'll draw it over here. So from the Agent Gateway, we can, we can enforce. Uh, so if, a, uh, if an agent is calling out to, uh, to a set of tools, let's say we have a number of uh, tool servers or, or MCP servers here. What, what we can do is, let's say each of these, these tool servers or MCP servers exposed 10 different tools. 
we might not want to expose all 30 of those tools to this particular agent. We might want to pick and choose a few across uh, the various backends, and we'll expose maybe only eight tools to the, uh, to the agent. That way, the, the AI, AI model can make uh, good decisions about which tools to use. The, uh, the next thing we'll want to do here is we'll want to secure the, uh, the transport between the agent and gateway, but we also want to give, you know, we want to enforce that it has the right credentials to be able to even call any of these tools. So we'll, we'll secure the, the communications here, uh, and then we'll enforce that you have some sort of uh, token here that then can be validated by the gateway, and we can do fine-grained authorization and policy around the calls to the uh, to the back end ser um, MCP servers. Uh, we also want to call out to a uh, uh, some sort of telemetry system or tracing system for any time an agent is calling out to any of these tools and and what those calls look like because we want to very closely. Um, understand what are the behaviors and the patterns of, of the calls in the system so we can go back and, uh, and understand why the agent was making those decisions. Now, you might think this looks and sounds like a reverse proxy or a typical API gateway, but in this case it's, it's not, um, and it really can't be. A, uh, a typical API gateway or reverse proxy, we'll call it uh, reverse proxy, takes a request, we'll call this the request, and it'll go through some routing rules, and uh, of the back ends, it'll decide that the request comes in and, and has to go to this one back end, right? So it takes one thing in, does some little rules, and then, and then specifies uh, one thing out. In this particular case with MCP, since it's a stateful protocol, like, like we mentioned, we have a request or a, a tool call or a list listing come in, and in the uh, the gateway. If so, if we're, if we're asking to to list the tools available, this a, this proxy here is going to need to go and ask all of these MCP servers or tool servers, hey, what what tools do you have? And it's going to take that that those responses or aggregate all of those responses and return that back to the client here. But since this is stateful, there's going to be a number of various sessions here. And there's going to be a number of various sessions on this side as well. And so what this ends up being is a multiplexing problem where we have to try to call a bunch of different backend servers, grab their responses, and make sure that it goes to the, cor the response goes to the correct, uh, correct client. And so traditional reverse proxies, which are built on the one-to-one -one model, are not very good at handling this type of uh, stateful and multiplexing problem. Now they can be retrofitted and they can be changed, uh, but a lot of times if you look at things like Nginx and uh, Envoy Proxy, those are very stable and mature proxies that don't want to change their entire architecture to, uh, to support this, and it would be dangerous to do that. Um, so because the, these protocols are moving fast and because the um, the paradigm of how they're moving prompts and, and tool requests between, uh, you know, inside the proxy is different than what we see with a reverse proxy. What we've done is we've built a, uh, a new gateway, the agent gateway, that can understand MCP and understand A to A, which we'll talk about in a second, and implement that statefulness and that multiplexing and demultiplexing, as well as move quickly because these, uh, these protocols are changing and new protocols are, are emerging. Um, and so in the A to A case, we have something very similar where we have an agent trying to talk to another agent. A to A is also stateful. So when we have an agent talking to a, another agent, what it's going to say, say is, hey, can you, can you complete this task for me? And the, uh, the other agent is going to say, yes, I can complete it, but I'll let you know about it later because it's going to take a little bit of time. Or it'll say, yeah, I can complete this, but I need more, more info. All right, so what this, this protocol ends up being more of a long-running task and status workflow with updates and communication back and forth between the, uh, the, the various agents. 
Um, and again, you know, having a stateful multiplexed uh, type uh, type proxy or gateway in this case works uh, a lot better to solve these uh, these problems. So that is an example of a purpose built uh, data plane that we can use in agent to agent or agent to tool communications. Um, agent gateway dot dev is uh, is the open source project. You can go and try it. It is uh, it can be run standalone. So the gateway can be configured with. Uh, uh, so if we if we draw another picture here, the gateway, the agent gateway can be configured with a JSON file as a standalone gateway, but it can also be configured with a control plane over XDS. So if you want to run it in a standalone environment, maybe you're running on VMs, or you're running it in a, in a container environment that you, you want to control the config statically or, or Lambda or something, um, then that you can do it that way. But if you're running it in Kubernetes or some sort of dynamic environment, uh, we can also configure it and manage it from a remote control plane. And these components together, the control plane and the data plane, also they come together in a project called K-Gateway. So you may have seen this. Um, this project, kgateway.dev, which is a traditional, uh, started off as, uh, as a traditional API gateway, uh, has a data plane built on Envoy, but can now support this uh, agent gateway data plane for uh, agentic communication and those types of workloads. So if you're interested in learning more, go check out agentgateway.dev. Also check out uh, the, some of the previous videos we've done on, uh, on kagent, and otherwise check out solo.io.